Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go to Crimea, Sebastopol. Just yesterday Ukraine performed an aerial attack on the city targeting the Russian command headquarters with many of the officers inside. It is happening not for the first time, few months ago Ukraine already targeted the Russian Navy headquarters, severely damaging the building. The building was almost destroyed. Well, today some of the sources spread the information that the Russian General Commander Gerasimov was inside the command headquarters building by the time there was the attack of the Ukrainian army. And they say that he probably lost his life. Well, actually, my friends, I wouldn't trust that information for now. It is not the first time that it's been reported about Gerasimov's death. We do not have the proofs, we do not have anything to confirm this information. Yes, there is still a small chance for this information to be true, but I wouldn't beat on that. But the good thing that the Russian command was attacked again and I believe that many of the officers followed the Russian Moskva ship. Plus there was the attack on the Russian Saki airfield in Crimea again. Probably I showed you those pictures in my yesterday's video. Again the main building, the headquarters of the airfield was attacked and it's been reported that more than 20 of the Russian soldiers lost their lives or were wounded. So the infrastructure of the airfield itself, I mean taxiways, runways, fuel storages were not targeted. This time only the main buildings where the personnel is located. The Telegraph came out with information about the possible Russian massive attack. So they say that Ukraine braces for renewed Russian offensive near Kharkiv in Kupensk direction. So they predict that on 15th of January Russia might start the massive attack. So they say about the city of Kupensk, which is very important by the way, it's located on a crossroad, Russia lost it back in 2022. So the source says that Russia Russia will try to attack from this place and also maybe from this place and from different directions. Well, actually the Russian attacks are already happening, especially near to Sinkivka. All of those were repelled by Ukrainian army and Russia has no success in Sinkivka, but rather losing their equipment and army personnel. So obviously Russia might accumulate lots of the forces over here, but it's not the fact that their assault might be successful towards Kupensk. Potentially it could be, because Putin has the political goal to occupy the city till the elections in March. He needs to show some of the success to his shamanist population and Kupensk plus Avdivka are two possible main achievements for the Russian regime. Just remember how they were happy about the Marinka occupation or what was left from that village. Ukraine resisted there for many years since 2014, but it's just a village, a small one. So how would Russia sell towards Kupensk? I think that they would fail with it and with all of their group that they created based on experience that we saw in Sinkivka. What is happening to the Russian vehicles and infantry is crazy. So for Ukraine, it's crucial obviously to build the defense lines using this time. I would say that the Telegraph article was nothing more but the article for the article, because Russia has already started the attack towards Kupensk, as well as in many other directions, for example, towards Liman. Also in that article, they say that there is the big risk for Crimea, but Crimea is occupied by the Russian forces. So analytics about the Telegraph article well, there is no analytics. Basically, the journalists who made the article didn't make the research. Ukraine has started to use the Hamas rocket artillery systems more widely on the front lines. Those are two of the Russian artillery systems, known as, and both of them were targeted with a single HIMARS missile causing the devastation. So why Russia put those two together, I'm out of clue. This happened in Zaporizhia Oblast, the southern part of Ukraine. You can see there are lots of the munition and the supply vehicle, which also was targeted. About the supply vehicles, Russia is losing many of them all around the front lines. Even though those Buhanka vans look clumsy, but they play a very important role for the Russian army, delivering the shells just to the artillery positions. 
plus many more of the other supplies so it's very critical to target them and unfortunately russia has many of those vans they are very cheap in production and they have more than average of road capabilities but at the same time those are not very reliable however they do not live for a long time that is why it's not the big disadvantage you know what russia again tried to attack the krinky village it is located in Kherson oblast across the Dnepr river our guys have the bridgehead out there and the drone commander Magyar with his unit is operating out there so they sent dramatic images from the place about the destroyed Russian convoys so here we go the full video I published on my telegram channel because I am unable to show you everything on this platform my friends what I can say that again Russia advanced with their armored vehicles plus infantry forces this time they didn't use the tanks but were ambushed anyways as far as I remember it's the fourth Russian advancement attempt towards Krinky village and yet none of those forces are reaching Krinky they all were caputed on the way and Ukraine do not have tanks or heavy armor vehicles in those positions so what our guys do there is absolutely extraordinary stopping the russian assaults in those conditions it's just crazy again fpv drones help a lot nevertheless russia continued the advancement today for example in Avdivka region one more attack attempt in reaching berdichi or stepova however it was conducted somewhere over here on the north from those villages let's check out again this source so russia took some of the ground out there however ukraine tries to attack back we see lots of the artillery fire and also the ukrainian counterattack attempt towards this sector and here as you probably can see the russian vehicles on fire so this attack attempt from the russian side is complete failure ukraine is also using some of the surveillance systems to identify the russian positions and the russian vehicles then they move out to attack ukraine and what we see here is the big russian advancement towards terny before ukraine performed the counterattack, pushing russian forces away from terny but it seems like russia accumulated new forces and they've took the ground back again can they potentially reach Terni and all of those settlements near to those lakes? Well, yes, but not in a close perspective. They've already got many of the attempts, but each time were thrown back. So I do expect that the Ukraine will attack them again. At least we have the artillery fire marks from the Ukrainian side. All right, let's check more of the Russian achievements. They say that they've targeted the RST system. Well, indeed, there is the video of the Lancet drone which flies towards the system and hit the ground in front of it, not causing any kind of the damages to this decoy. Yes, it's not the RST system it's the dummy they show one more RST system as they say which was targeted again by the lancer drone this time yes the drone hit the decoy right into the rocket compartment so it should have been the huge explosion in this case but nothing happened because those are not the RST systems not real systems but as I say to you decoys so let me see the distance over here and over here yeah it looks similar but at the same time very very different plus we have the confirmation from the german side that ukraine hadn't lost any kind of the rst air defense systems but russia already put those in their statistics of the destroyed targets as well as many of the HIMARS systems i believe more than 30 they say ukraine widely uses those systems around the front lines putting them usually on the open fields to be identified by the russian surveillance and later on russia hits the targets with their lancet drones about the vehicle losses for the last three days well russia lost 85 of those ukraine 42 so losses in general from all of the front lines is one to two but at some of the directions for example in avdivka russia is losing 1 to 12 or 1 to 13 and for example in Krinky, russia is losing everything and ukraine nothing because ukraine doesn't have any kind of the vehicles out there it doesn't mean that ukraine has no losses in Krinky because the positions of ukrainian army there are under the constant russian artillery fire unfortunately our soldiers suffer a lot but nevertheless 
less are able to repel the Russian attacks. Again, I will share these statistics on my Telegram channel for you to see everything. Interesting, Russia started to build some of the fences between the airplanes which are staying at the aprons of their military airfields. So they seem to be in lack of the funds to build the normal hangars, that is why they built those concrete walls. Well, actually it might help at some point against the shrapnel, for example from the Atakams missiles. There were already the cases that the Russian airfields were totally devastated by Atakams. According to the Russian news, they are planning to make the cluster munition warheads for their cruise missiles and that might bring lots of the devastation to the civilian infrastructure of Ukraine, unfortunately. It might cause the fire in vast of the territories, for example, of the power plant or oil storage. By the way, there is the proved information that one of the military plants in Kyiv was attacked by the Russian missiles and unfortunately the Russian missiles went into the building, severely damaging the production of weaponry. We do not have the details about what kind of the military production was produced in that factory, but nevertheless those news are not good. Russia complained to India that their shells are used in Ukraine by Ukrainian army, so India started the investigation about the case. We have even the video evidence of 155 mm shells being used by Ukrainian army. I published those in my previous videos. So Indian officials now think that those shells were delivered to Ukraine via the third countries. Well, I would say it's some sort of the Russian scheme to deliver the weaponry. They also use the third countries to bypass the sanctions. And Ukraine uses this tool to get more weaponry. About the North Korean ballistic missiles, it was also proved that Russia received those into their army. So, for example, you may see this part and the fat boy is over here. And let's go to find the debris, which is located in Kharkiv city. And here you may see exactly the same part of the missile. So, this and again, this identical. By the way, new photos appeared in internet with Kim Jong-un visiting the military factory which is producing the missiles and the systems that might carry those. As you can see, many of the vehicles and intercontinental missiles on them. So indeed, it is crazy of how this regime obtained this technology. Obviously, China and Russia helped. At the same time, the Western countries were more or less calm about this stuff. And soon, Iran would obtain the same tools. It's just crazy what is happening. Moreover, we have not so good news that the representative of the State Department of the United States Matthew Miller, as far as I remember, said that United States of America will not supply Ukraine at the previous level, will not support Ukraine as it was in 2022 or 2023. I have published those news on my Telegram channel and I got some of the critics for that, saying that I misunderstood the information, but actually I don't think that I misunderstood it. Clearly it is what it is. On the question about the Ukrainian support, if it's gonna be as long as it takes, Mr. Miller answered, as long as it takes, that doesn't mean that we are going to continue to support them at the same level of military funding that we did in 2022 and 2023. We don't think that it should be necessary. And later on he adds that the ultimate goal is to transition Ukraine to stand on its own feet and to help Ukraine build its own industrial base so it can both finance and build and acquire munition on its own. I would say that it is the fairy tale from the wonderland and excuse not to support weaponry for Ukraine. Ukraine, unfortunately, will never ever have the proper military infrastructure, proper factories to conquer the Russian army. Because Russia has enormous military resources. They produce 300 modern tanks per year. Before the war, they produced 20. The same goes for artillery and many more things. And if Russia is in lack of something, they usually ask their friends like North Korea or Iran, which would happily support them with everything they need. For example, ammunition for artillery. Again, Russia has more ammunition from the North Korea than Ukraine got from all of the European Union countries. Yes, Ukraine is producing some of the munition too, but it's nothing compared to the Russian resources. Well, judging on the answer for Mr. Miller, 
I would say that America tries to lower or drop the support of Ukraine. Still, I'm sure that the new military package will be voted for Ukraine, but telling fairy tales about the Ukraine producing everything needed to conquer Russia, no, it's just a fairy tale. To build the new military factories in Ukraine to produce the weaponry, well, it requires lots of the investments, many more compared to just transition the weaponry that the United States already have. Plus, can you secure those factories? Factories against the Russian drones or hypersonic or cruise missiles attacks? I don't think so and as I already told you after the recent Russian attack we already got one of the military factories damaged. So I would say that our Western leaders in general are in lack of this power of democracy as it used to be. It seems like the laws of nature do not change. Who is more impudent, who shows more power and strength usually wins. You see that Putin was able to consolidate dictators around him in the common union. So definitely it is the war between democracies and autocracies. And we need to understand that just waiting will not help. It will lead just to more dramatic circumstances for our Western democratic world. I'm not saying that those pricks will win. No, democracy will prevail. But for what cost? We need to minimize the losses and possible risks by helping Ukraine, Taiwan, South Korea and all of the rest of our allies. By the way, today North Korea launched the artillery fire, the huge one, on the demilitarized area in one of the places and the South Korea had to evacuate more than 2,000 of civilians from the place near to the border. North Korea launched more than 200 of the artillery shells to the demilitarized area. The South Korea already said that it will respond with the military drills. This was shown as the result of the North Korean artillery attack. It shows us that any kind of the frozen conflict, even though it was frozen for decades, might spark in a matter of days. One more thing why Ukraine shouldn't negotiate with Russia. Russia has many more resources, so there will be the point then they will try to attack Ukraine again. China has built a huge dummy copy of the United States air carrier Gerald Ford. Do you think that they do just for fun? No, they are preparing for something. Maybe even for the landing operation in Taiwan. Well, I still think that they will fail with this operation potentially, but still they might try it. For me, it was always a great mystery of how civilized countries allowed the regimes like in China, North Korea or Russia even to exist. Actually, West built the Chinese economy. Most of the things around are made in China. And now they are powerful enough to conquer the Allies. It's just crazy. More and more Western-made components are found in the Russian missiles or any kind of the weaponry. As I say to you, usually they obtain those from the third countries. And still there is no robust tool of how to deal with that, of how to cut all of the supplies that Russia uses for their military. My friend, a vessel captain Timur Rudov, also found out the information of how Russia sells their oil for the higher price. We know that Russia has the maximum price limit for their oil. I believe this is $60 per barrel. So what Russia does to bypass those limits? Basically, they refill the oil from one tanker that goes from the Novorossiysk port to the other tanker of the third countries. And they have this refilling procedure right in the middle of Mediterranean Sea, near to the Greece in neutral waters. All of those red symbols are oil tankers, some of them empty, some of them full. After they pump the oil to the other tanker, that oil is not longer considered as the Russian one because they also make a fake documents for it. It is known fact explained by Timur Rudolf. I shared his video in English on my Telegram channel and I will also put it in the video description just below. So that is how Russia gets its dirty money for war. And our politicians are impotent enough to allow them to do it. Or maybe they just got the profit from those cells. 
about the Ukrainian pilots training on F-16s. Some of the media sources came out with misinformation about the case. They misunderstood the statement from Pentagon saying that the training of the Ukrainian pilots will be completed at the end of the year. 2024 So community, pro-Ukrainian community was shocked about the news of why it takes so long. But if we check out the actual statement of Pentagon official, it was said not till the end of the year, but later this year. And they've told only about the Arizona base where our Ukrainian pilots are now on the training. But also the training is conducted in Europe. And based on the information from the media sources that Norway sent some of the airplanes for Ukrainian pilots training, it means that our guys are on the practice. And practice is the final stage of the training. It means that the training will be done much faster than till the end of the year. No, it will be done in a couple of months maximum. But again, we have many of the groups of the pilots, so maybe some of them will finish by the end of the year. But the first group will be ready soon, as I told you. Kadyrov said that he may exchange the Ukrainian prisoners of war if Western countries rise the sanctions from his family, from his horses and the private jets. At the same time, he agrees that West would continue to pose sanctions on him personally. He also forced the Ukrainian prisoners of war to record the message to the West that they wanted to be exchanged for lifting the sanctions on Kadyrov's family. Why Kadyrov is so concerned about the sanctions on his family? Well, basically because he has lots of the stats on them. The dirty money in the West banks, the property on the West, all of that is not personally on Kadyrov, but on his family. And he wants to get all of that back. Also, this situation shows the real power of Kadyrov, so he is able to exchange the prisoners of war personally. Guys, and what do you think personally about the case? Should we lift the sanctions from Kadyrov and release many of the prisoners of war? My own opinion that if they release all of the Mariupol and Azovstal defenders, that is the deal. I found this video on one of the Ukrainian Telegram channels. It's called Combat Footage UA. And here you can see that the Ukrainian soldier takes something in the hand. He said, oh, I'm very curious of what is this. Well, it is the illustration of what not to do. This is the notice from the Ukrainian army on their page. Do not touch this. This is the cumulative explosives anti-tank mine with electromagnetic target detection. It also has the mechanism of the cell destruction. No any actions are allowed to be conducted with this mine. Do not come close to it and turn all of the communication devices because obviously they might trigger the explosion with electromagnetic signal. Well, finally, the logic of our soldier prevails and he just dropped this tool saying, well, probably it is the explosives device, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, after all, it's the anti-tank mine and he is not the tank. My friends, please don't forget to press the like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. Also, if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon or just on the sponsorship of this YouTube channel. Thank you a lot for your kind support. My friends, as usual, I wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.